Oh, what is up down and sideways here with the love individuals? It is League Unlocked. We have returned Eric and Mark here with you for our way, 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 way. That's five ways too early global power rankings. First one of 2024. Going to be lots of prefaces and preambling going on when so many LPL teams, we just straight up do not have a gauge for how good they are. But we're still going to attempt to do some way too early global power rankings. It's no fun not having one of these in the bank, yeah. in the in the chamber, and getting that base level type of expectation on how we're looking and how we're perceiving the the global scene right now for 2024, compared to waiting about another month, month and, and a little bit from now when you'd be out of the break that the LPL is gonna have, where you could then reset and maybe take that focus again. But then you're dealing with what well, we've got this large gap in games between all the other regions in the LPL. We'll sort that out another day. Today is the day to do that way, way too early look at the at the global scene of 2024. And I'd much rather have, you know, insane fluctuation teams jumping up a bunch of spots over the next couple of weeks than just having to slam somebody in without any lead up to it. So there'll be lots of shifting going on. And because there's so few LPL series to go off of, that just means for now... You get a nice little surplus of Western teams making the list, starting with some of these LEC squads rounding out that playoff push. You got both Mad Lions, Koi at 20, and then SK a couple spots ahead, both sitting at 5 and 4. And enough positive signs absolutely throughout these first three weeks where you can have faith in them making at least noise in the round robin stage. Oh, what a what a treat it is for the LEC that both of these teams are operating at this type of level that are going to be interesting, are going to continue their path on in this winter split because it could have gone absolutely very different ways for both of them when you're examining how this, this experiment has played out. You look at SK, the team in the LEC with the shortest game time. They have been closing things out nice and quick when they've got control, but they're pretty much sitting at that equal uh, goal deficit, you know, per minute around that zero what you're looking at in these matches. And then you're going off to the Mad Lions Koi and you're saying, hey, this is the El Yoya experiment. And I think, uh, you know, out of all the unknowns of what we could have seen in the LEC was about how El Yoya was really going to respond to taking this leadership role with the team. And I think early signs are very good on his investment level uh, and, and level of commitment with this young roster. And whether or not it ends up being a deep run in winter, the growth and opportunity for these best ofs and the improvement that I am certain we're going to see from these rookies from Mad Lions Koi. I'm expecting them to be legit contenders as we go on through uh, this three split year in the LEC. That's just how good, especially the bot lane and Mirwin has been uh, on that top side for Mad Lions Koi. The pair of three squads, or three seeds at the moment, Fnatic and FlyQuest. Fnatic, you give one spot ahead of FlyQuest, and honestly, the reason there's so many LEC squads is we've got a lot of games to go off of them. FlyQuest, with only four games, 25% of their matches have been them getting smashed, even though they're 3-1. and one. <laughs> It's a tough situation looking at and understanding Then again, yes, you're going to have that extra boost of, of LCS and LEC teams, but specifically that LEC having those extra games, three games a week, all these type of things building up in that winter split. And yes, that gives that fanatic squad the edge. We've seen Humanoid and Razork really shine in this early part of the year, which has certainly been not the same as we saw last year for this Fnatic team, not repeating the same type of mistakes and seeing this strong start to the year. Now, ahead of them in the 15th spot, you might be saying NIP Ninjas in Pajamas. We're talking about this squad, but this is the new look boys heading into this year rookie returning to the organization to be with his buddy Fotik and then Aki and Shanji coming over from OMG they started out 2-0 and looked dominant against some weaker teams in the LPL had the matchup recently against JDG and even though yeah, if they had won that of course they would have climbed up they get 2-0 but the first game they're one botched barren play away from potentially winning and even in game two they forced a 40 minute game out of GDG. You gotta be paying attention to this squad and certainly one of those ones where you're gonna have to keep track of them as this LPL year evolves. What they're doing and how they rise up 
or if they don't to that top level in the LPL. You, you already mentioned about the, the former OMG players on this squad. You look at a player like Cream stepping up into his role with top esports and what he can do. It's about what they can do as well with this lineup and how they can find that power for the team. And you saw in this series, Fotik, sure, he had picks like Caitlyn that are there to, by the way, a pick we haven't seen very much, but the range Caitlyn gets with Milio is, uh, it's, it's just a bit silly. It's one of those top options that I think a lot of people forget about when you're talking about the type of boost that you can gain with a champion like Milio. Caitlyn's not one that a lot of people are, are, are zeroing in on, but certainly good to see that in the LPL early. And with that lane dominant pick, he was racking up some sizable CS leads against the little known player in a uh, ruler in the bottom <laughs> lane. You've probably uh, heard of this guy. Another pick that's going alongside Milio. We saw a little bit of Kogma today out of Mr. D plus aiming, but unfortunately for him, he was running into an absolute bull because that's three in a row since Bull subbed in. For the Kwangdong Freaks as a starting AD carry. Now they get a 2-0, and not just a 2-0, they kind of smashed D plus today. It did smash D plus today. I think that there's some word to be said for not having a good day, not having good performance from D plus Kia in this series, is one of the things to mention. But you have to give that credit to the freaks and what they were able to do on the day and this rise that we have been seeing out of them really since. Again, both stepped into that bottom lane, that duo. You're looking at Andil, and I think that he has been the biggest benefactor, really, when you look at this team and how that bottom lane has played and how his play has risen up with this new ADC in the lineup. TV Max has got Cuz leading the charge. That's the one you got to be talking about because, yes, it is this young players and everything else, but having that veteran in Cuz and having that veteran perform at the level that he has started out this split, continuing that hot streak from KT Rolls for last year, this is a good mix for one of these rising squads like the Kwang Dong Kings. And this is a team that we and lots of other people have been saying for going back to the start of last year. It, it feels like... They're ready to take that next step. They're getting more and more experience for guys like Bulldog. And we were saying, you need a step up from the rest of the squads, not just this hyped up young player in Bulldog. Bull comes in and seems to be like a switch has been flipped. And now Cuz has, you know, integrated into this team almost seamlessly. And for a guy who not even two years ago were ready to call washed up and his career is over, the resurgent second half of his career that Cuz has had, is, it's nothing short of incredible. And it really was something, again, one of these ones seeing D plus Kia have a bad day on the day, but certainly that head-to-head -head matchup and where we're expecting these two to fall in the picture of the LCK, getting this type of win, continuing this trajectory of, of improving, this is looking very good for the Freaks to make that sh shift, to make that transition into that next tier of the LCK and to be one of these teams you got to be keeping your eye on as a dark horse in the picture. And shout out to them for completely destroying our LCK rankings when they come in, show up, <laughs> kick down the door in 2-0 uh, D+. Last two squads on this list, separated by uh, Guangdong and D+. NRG at 14, Cloud9 at 11, a few spots in between. Despite Cloud9 not... You know, having that rough loss and NRG dominating FlyQuest, unless Cloud9 continues to falter, NRG is not going to be able to top them until they get that rematch in the head-to-head. -head. You need that rematch. That is the edge. That is the only deciding factor on that teetering seesaw type of situation of that top LCS squad trying to find their way in these power rankings. I think... You can talk about the you know lack of games we've got with the LPL, uh, as I already mentioned, contributing to this little boost for LCS and LEC squads. But you do got to mention NRG last year getting into that top eight situation. Of course, it's all the luck of how the Swiss stage falls out and all that other drama. But you got to acknowledge top eight in this type of situation, realizing it's not totally out of the question when you're throwing these type of teams into the zone. And listen, we got three LCS squads debuting here but you need a substantial level up from any of the other teams if you're hoping and praying for a fourth na team to ever make it on this list this split yeah it really is gonna have to be one of those situations i think the lec maybe we can see that type of traction of course it's gonna be one knowing that last year was such a downgrade such a down performance for the lec on that international stage overall picture right now 
Just want to keep that in mind when we're talking about some of these Western squads creeping in towards this top 10 ranking like Cloud9 is so close to get. And Cloud9 doesn't quite make the top 10 cut, but a pair of those European squads do. They had the same record to close things out. We got both Team BDS and G2 in that 10-9 spot. G2 gets the win streak to close out the split, so you put them just a bit ahead of them, but they are... I would say pretty convincingly the two favorites. I'll give them a 1A and 1B as we're heading into the best ofs at EU. And I, it's it's almost a flavor preference type of thing when you're talking about, excuse me, looking at Team BDS and G2 and who, what is your favorite flavor of the LEC, that strongest one, that option that it's going to be. You look at the numbers, you're looking at strong, just strict statistics, game time, goal difference, all these things. You're probably going with Team BDS, just in the slightest of edges, what they have been able to accomplish this split. But if you're going on that trust factor, that veteran status, there's no other team than G2 to lead that charge. And they're a uh, team... Very familiar, very comfortable sitting in this just inside the top 10 on these rankings. It's years and years, I feel like we're talking about them. In terms of comparing current form versus what we were getting in 2023, I mean, it's comparable. Yikes, the star, the standout. It feels like Caps is playing at a little bit of a higher level than we saw to close out 2023. And we're still allowing time for both the bot lane and top lane to cook up some of these spicier picks. The BDS side of things, really hasn't felt like Adam has had to come online yet. They've been excelling in other parts of the game. Which has been fantastic because that was the one thing, the most requested thing that you could have asked from this BDS team heading into this year. The improvements, the changes that need to be made after the results, after the learning session that you had at the World Championship last year. This is exactly the response that you wanted to see out of this BDS team, out of the four members outside of Adam on this BDS team is a big one to look at. You already mentioned with G2, you're still waiting really for that bottom lane, top lane to start cooking, start heating up and provide that angle that you know G2 can give you because Yike has been that Yike that we know that he has been the last year in the LEC and continuing no sophomore slump. He's starting to look like he's, he's racking it up at that all-star level. Caps is contributing at that clutch factor that you need. I'm still waiting to see Broken Blade and still see that bottom lane fully rank up the heat that we have actually seen them get to even last year trickiest lck team maybe to rank kt rolster comes in number eight they smashed okay savings bank brian great everyone's been doing that in the lck they have dropped a series to d plus and kwan gong who are lower than them on these rankings but feel like even in losses we've never had a bad series out of kt they were competitive it was three games against both d plus and kwang dong we've seen them reach some incredibly high highs already kwang dong's definitely breathing down their neck coming close for them though yeah they are absolutely on the tails from this type of situation but kt rolster still holding into this top 10 spot and, and one of these teams that i think again you need to see that challenge at the very top level to get that understanding of where we're going to figure them out, what type of uh, you know growth we could maybe even see from this team in this split this year, all those type of questions. Still waiting for a little bit more from KT Rolster, but so far still seeing enough of a power level, enough of a difference making that you're going to be looking at this team to be something that is going to matter towards those later parts of the playoff. Same thing or similar thing can be said for Hanwha Life because they looked so dominant against the lower tier LCK squads for that 3-0 start. And it's not like they got 2-0 slammed by DRX, you know? It was T1 who absolutely put them in the dirt. But guess what? T1's done that to a lot of teams over the last few years. And just because they're T1 doesn't mean that you get a, uh, you know, a free pass on taking down that challenge of toppling the Titan to get to that number one spot. That still has to be the goal and has to be viewed as something that is attainable, is a possibility, not just an, uh, you know, man, minuscule chance type of thing to get it done. I think when you're looking at Hanwha Life and what we have seen from them, of course, mentioning even that loss in that T1 series, you've seen very good things out of the other four members. And I think it's Zeka in the mid lane. You got to be focusing in on, of course, that T1 series so important in those matchups with that Corky was so poor for him. That's one of those ones where you got to be looking at his performance, his fluctuation on what your type of value, type of impact you're getting from him. This Hanwha Life roster works and it works at that elite level of the LCK. 
only if you're getting that world championship level performance from someone like Zeka. This has not been it this past week. What has been it has been 369 in his debuts or return debuts for top esports on the next couple LPL squads. Again, only two series to really be going off of, but top esports, yes, they dropped a set to BLG, but they smashed them in one of the games, forced them to go to three, and then absolutely pumped EDG, who, by the way, looked like the absolute worst team in the LPL. Oh, um, you know, you had you had to bring that Man. one into it. Look, this ain't EDG of old, so it's less impressive. This ain't the EDG of old. This ain't the EDG of, of recent old. Uh, you're going back to the, when they won the World Championship, not looking so hot in that type of situation, but you are right. What is so hot is top esports and 369 returning to that top lane. So many questions, so many things last year about what was going on looking into that top lane position as that weak point, as that question mark for top esports and what was going on. Now you've got 369 delivering that solid, dependable, destructive top lane gameplay that he brought last year to a squad like JDG. And then we get to talk about my favorite thing about top esports, stepping into the mid lane cream, what he has been able to do and how he has risen up to this challenge of leading a team like top esports in this elite category of the LPL. This is that step up in his career. And I think he is responding well so far. It's a step up into the top five for the world finalists from last year. That is Weibo Gaming, new top side of the map. Zhao Hao and ZDZ replacing the Shy have looked pretty good. Again, some lower tier teams uh, that Weibo has played. And then ahead of them with JDG. Both these guys are 2-0, 4-0 when you look at the game score. And obviously both of them are getting a bit of carryover for the cores of the roster returning. You've got to put some respect on what last year was when we have so few games to pull from. Right. That is absolutely the boost that both of these squads are getting. And until there is that stumble, till there is that falter, they get that benefit of the doubt type of situation with such little games. Squad like Weibo, as you mentioned, the replacements for the Shy have come in and have not looked out of place out of sorts they're still able to play that weibo gaming type of style a little bit of chaos a little bit of attention in that top side they're able to get it done this is one of those things where it is waiting for that other lpl matchups these high quality ones at the very top that's where you're going to start to see the separation uh, brew in with some of these teams it is crazy the first week and a half there's been hardly any marquee lpl matchups like jdg nip has been one of the biggest ones and then blg versus top esports as we alluded to earlier but blg is your top lpl squad they got a 3-0 start that one single loss uh two top esports in that series but knight returning to the crew we thought on paper this looks like the best team in the lpl and so far that's holding true if JDG and Weibo Gaming are getting that little bit of a boost, a little bit of consideration from last year, you take what consideration BLG are getting from last year and you slap in Knight on top of that? Oh, Ooh. baby. Yes, that is one quick trip to being the top LPL squad. The BLG, they've taken care of business. As you mentioned, you look at the pretty much the only really for me marquee matchup that we have had in the LPL to start out this year is that BLG Top Esports series. And even with that pushback from Top Esports, which I think is a good sign about how good Top Esports is, as we've already talked about, but really BLG comes through and especially the addition of Knight, really making that difference in the mid lane, providing that firepower, that elite superstar status right there for the squad that I think a lot of people would look at last year and realize, yes, a lot of good things. Yes, your gal, but if you can fit in a superstar like this and you can use him as that main point, Absolutely, this is the ticket for BLG. And listen, that marquee TES matchup was match one, day one, game one <laughs> of the LPL. So still waiting for the schedule uh, to really hit a roll, hit a stride where you're getting playoff v. playoff matchups across the board. But for now, that top three in the LPL easily going to be able to you know vie for these top two spots on the global rankings depending on how things go out but for now it's still the lck sitting pretty atop the table i mean you include anything from 2023 and obviously t1 is going to be at the top of any rankings you would do as the defending world champions the only way someone could be ahead of them is oh winning a head-to-head -head, which eh, i guess that's what genji did 
That's all Genji apparently is able to do recently is get that head Got the to LCK head against... buff. International debuff, domestic buff. <laughs> it's worked out for a couple of trophies. I'm pretty sure they would maybe trade that trophy for the trophy that T1 just recently got, but that's a whole other Condor conversation. Yes, we start out this year, 2024, with these two LCK Titans, these two mainstays at the very top of our rankings board, Genji and T1, of course. And the way you look at it, of with that separation of that one series between the two of them, that's got to be that deciding factor. That with what you look at both these teams, they are bringing that same type of firepower that brought them to the top of these rankings last year. We are already seeing that type of uh, of impact from these squads so far. And I think the one of many strengths of both of these squads and the telltale sign of an absolute world class team is. You've seen both these squads go behind, get behind in games, most recently the D plus one for Gen.G, but always these gold leads feel like they should be bigger. They feel like they should be further behind, but it never gets beyond that three, four K max. They're always within striking difference, even or striking distance, even if it feels like the other team's been doing everything right. And then one team fight can completely change the momentum. It doesn't matter. No leads too big against a squad like Gen G at this point early on. I think you look at the the you know stats between these two squads, try to find that separation. You're seeing longer game times for Gen G, kind of hanging around a little bit longer. T1, it is a little bit more decisive, a little bit faster in how they're getting it. But you actually do got to look at T1, and I think we can talk about this one. Historically for them, a bit of a, a slow starter at times, leading to a couple of these series going to the full three-game distance. Yeah, I'm honestly, I thought they'd have a worse record at this point. After winning Worlds, the insane offseason, I was expecting a slower start. So pleasantly surprised with how T1 has looked so far in the very oh-so-early days <laughs> of spring just saying prepare for a lot of these guys to be jumping and falling huge amounts over the next couple of weeks as the games played slowly start to ramp up across all the major regions and don't expect so much western uh, representation <laughs> going forward but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people as always thanks for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip